Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Today we're going to look at this tank. This is the WZ113, the Chinese Tier 10 heavy tank. And it's a beautiful tank. It really is. I love this tank, to be honest with you. I, I think this is one of those tanks that really is underappreciated in the game. And the reason I say that is because it has a lot going for it. Admittedly, it also has some very, very significant weak spots. Um, <laughs> primarily the hull armor, but more importantly, its ability to turn the turret. I mean, the time it takes to turn the turret, you could probably get through, I don't know, War in Peace by Tolstoy. And the time it turns to, uh, the time it takes to turn the hull, you could probably get through a decent copy of any of the Shakespeare plays. But the fact of the matter is, it's still a beautiful tank. It has got a relatively nice gun. It has got relatively good DPM. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at Blitzstar's tank compare. So what I've done here, I've shoved the WZ alongside all the other type of heavies that it will come along with, namely the IS-7, the IS-4, the E-5 and the 215B. Now look, I could, I'm not going to shove in collectors and I'm not going to shove in premium tanks before anybody asks. And I'm not going to put in the likes of the E-100 because the tanks like the E-100, the VK-72 and the 60TP, they're super heavies, okay? Um, and they don't belong in this type of heavy medium type thing. I'm also discounting the likes of the Kranwagen, um, the AMX 50B and the T57 Heavy and the Yo because they are auto loaders. So that's why I've got the tanks that I've got lined up here. Straight off the back, as you can see here, the DPM of the WZ113 is the best in its class. I mean, 3,439 it's churning out on its standard ammunition. That is head and shoulders above anything else. I mean, look at the IS-7, look at the IS-4. I mean, they're a thousand lower near as damn it. Thing is, high DPM comes at a cost, and the cost in the, in the form of its penetration. The WZ doesn't have great penetration, 255 to be exact. By far the worst of all the tier 10 heavy medium type tanks. However, despite its lack of penetration, it has reasonably good alpha damage. Okay, it's beaten by the IS-7, but it's comparable to the IS-4, certainly better than the E-5 and the 215B. Rate of fire, while well, it's churning out just over eight rounds a minute, that is the best for a heavy in its tier. Reload time, just over seven seconds, again, that is even better than the 215B. That's not even dropping the adrenaline. Caliber, it's 122, it's a, yeah, it's 122, which is not as good as the IS-7, it's the same as the IS-4, and it's better than the E-5 and the 215B. Shell velocity is also better than its Russian counterparts, but not as good as its American and British friends. Aim time, well, the aim time is better than its Russian counterparts, not as good as the American and the British. Dispersion, again, it's better than its Russian counterparts, equal to the American E5, and not as good as the 215B. However, this tank does suffer from gun depression, you can see there, I mean, six degrees. It's the same as the IS-7, it's the same as the IS-4, but the thing that sets those apart is those two tanks are, in theory, heavily armoured compared to this. Speed, it's nippy. I mean, this thing is as fast as the IS-7, churning out 50 kilometres an hour going forwards, 15 going backwards. So, by far, this is the fastest tank alongside the IS-7 for its class and for its tier. However, the IS-7 has a much better engine compared to the WZ-113. But the thing is, the 113 uses that power to weight ratio a little bit better, which means its terrain resistance is pretty good. Not as good as the 215B, but better than the IS-4 and certainly better than the IS-7. 
Camo profile, not the best as you can see there, but then again, it's a heavy tank and no heavy tank's got a great camo profile. As for credit coefficiency, well, it's the same as the IS-7 and the 215B, not as good as the IS-4, but certainly better than the E-5. View range, well, same as same, apart from the 215B, which is slightly better. Hit points, it's only got 2,300. That's not as good as the IS-7 or the IS-4. It's better than the 215B and the same as the E-5. But this is where you start to see some of that problems with this tank creeping in. It is a very light tank. It's coming out at 44.6 tonnes. That is not a heavy for a heavy tank. And that's why you start to see how fast it can be and why that small engine is able to do the things that the IS-7's engine, which is much bigger, is also able to do. Mainly because it hasn't got the armor on its hull. It does have very good turret armor, especially on the front, but it does struggle. You can see there the armor is better than the E5 to an extent, but this is not an easy tank. The E5 is more mobile than this tank. Nevertheless, you can see from the Blitzstar stats, well, this one is comparable to the IS-7. It's got the second best win rate. It's got better average damage, better damage ratio, better kills, and better spots. Players, however, don't survive as long as this one as they do the IS-7, and the kill-death ratio isn't as good. That could be because there's only 3,357 playing this thing, where there's 12,081 playing the IS-7. You can see there a friend of mine, Mateus G23, on the EU server. It's topping the Hall of Fame with 8,858 damage. None too shabby, methinks. So that's its stats according to Blitzstars. So now let's have a look at this armor and see what the big deal is all about. This is the WZ-113 facing off against an IS-4. And already you can see that it's struggling with that hull. It's just very green. Okay, if you, this is like face, face, face on, slightly elevated, and then that upper plate becomes a little bit redder. But you're generally going to be facing it sort of more like this, so to speak. Whereas, whilst the hooper hull is quite good, it, it is starting to creep in. I mean, this area, you've got a 65% chance of penning it. But it's the turret that is really rock solid. I mean, you're talking 300 millimeters of, pen of armor here. Yes, you can pen these, but well, that's not easy, guys, believe me. And when I start to move this tank around, you can see it can side scrape, just about. It really can side scrape, and a lot of people don't realize that. It doesn't have the great, and you can move the turret around and you know try and try and stop those 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 bad spots. But I mean, the hull is relatively weak on this thing. Side on, it's just big green tomato, um, rather than a big red one. And at the rear, well, it's prone. You can you can easily hit that with HE and get a, a very nice engine fire going there. So it does have some of its flaws. It really does, especially with the armor. Now, if you stick it in a haul down position, which to be honest with you, you're not gonna get much because it's only on six degrees. You know, you got a little bit of a better chance to be perfectly frank, but it's that bottom plate that everybody aims for. And as I said, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be facing this thing like that and that that hull is just wide open. However, however, one of the things about this tank is it's actually quite nice to get up close and personal and try to face up certain tanks. And we will see that in a few games. So that's what the armor looks like. Let's now jump into some games and see how it actually performs. This is me on Middleburg in the WZ113. And as you can see on my team, we've got an APA tune so you know we've got pretty pretty strong team here now i'm going to make my way up now the reason i'm doing this is because whilst it's not very good haul down this tank because it's only got six degrees of gun depression it has got decent turn of speed and it's got really good dpm so i'm going to come up here and try and support the tanks and try and use the strengths of this tank mainly its dpm and its speed 
to maximum advantage. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and swamp the enemy here. So we get a shot into the FV and I'm going to push around onto the AMX. Now the AMX is a, is a good player. He's from Pink and he is a very good player. So I'm going to try and track him. We track him. Now he's a one shot. The Leo should finish him off. The Leo doesn't finish him off. The Leo finally finishes him off. Now I'm going to push around and see if I can get shots into this FV because why not? He's there. Um, unfortunately the Leo absorbs that shot which I, I get a bounce there. So bounce 310. The Leo just keeps getting in front of my gun but I get a good shot into the back chat. Now I can see the VK so I'm going to push onto the VK allow them to deal with the rest. I'm going to push onto this VK. I've already done 1300 damage. Push onto this VK hopefully catch him on the, on the hop. Yes we do. We knock a nice 400 into him. Continue our push round there's that Leo again. He just, he just likes getting in the way. <laughs> Bless him. So we're going to continue our push around, get him one into the back of his turret. Now he's he's doomed and gloomed. I'm going to leave him to his devices. We don't need him anymore. There's only two tanks left. I'm not going to be able to get there in time. They're sat on the base, strangely enough. Um, and this is this is basically a win. I mean, they're not going to be able to cap the base. It's just never going to happen. And we're going to win this one. We're going to have a nice rollout and, you know, okay, we didn't set the world on fire. We did 2.2k. We bounced 310. We didn't take any kills. But we're up there. We're up close and personal in the thick of it. And that's what you can do in a WZ113. That's why I love this tank. I think this tank is just a beautiful tank that is great support. And if you put it in the right position, use it to its strengths, never its weaknesses, you will find that you'll win more games than lose. That's certainly what I find anyway. I find that there were more games won in this tank than lost. And I really enjoy playing it. I think it's a fantastic little tank. And as you see there, we have third, third damage. Blood of Zeus of APA getting the top damage there. So, yeah, this, is, you know, th this was a good game and I enjoyed every minute of it. In this game, we're rolling out on Rockfield, and I've tuned up with my buddy Laurie Y of, of of the same clan, Vale, and we're going to the obligatory. Let's go to the C spot area. Although Loro is sort of going to do it unconventionally, I'm going to be a little bit more conventional in the way I approach this. Now, neither of us want to poke around that corner anytime soon because the hull armor on the WZ113 isn't as great as I keep telling everybody. Yes. The turret is fantastic, but the hull armor, a lot to be desired. Now, we can see that some of their tanks are there already, mainly their TDs. So, Loro is going to push round, because, like I said in the previous video, he can be aggressive when he wants to be. And all of a sudden, eek, there's an E4 over there. We don't want to be on the end of him. So, we get a shot into him. And now, unfortunately, I'm stuck in this position. I've got a Yo over there and an E4, and they know I'm here now, and I get stuck tag there for 561. I'd love to be able to go and support Loro. There are actually two Yo's and an E4 in that corner. And unbeknown to us at this moment in time, in the far corner by their spawn is actually an E100. So I'm absolutely stuck here now. I can't do anything other than try my best to whittle these down. There's the E100 there, look. So you know, I'm pretty stuck. And as much as I would love to go out there and, and help Loro the chance that I can't. So all I can do now is try and hold this position and try to farm a little bit and get those bounces. Get 640 there from the E100 coming in, hits the turret. Laro's asking for help. I can't help him. Two Yo's, now as to, uh, as, uh, 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 an object 268, and an E4, and, well the E4's now gone, so let's put one into this 268, try and give Laro some breathing space, but I'm very mindful of the Yo's that are up there. I can't overcommit. So put one into the yo, and you see the yo just tags me. Can I get one into this yo? Maybe not. Nope. Just don't get the penetration. Loro's gone down, unfortunately. I, I couldn't really do much about that. I'm really tied up. Um, but I'm able to sort of whittle the shots into these tanks, and we're already at 2.2k damage. And that's another bounce. That yo's gone. Now, once I've loaded, I can push onto the 268. The 268 gets a great roll into my bottom plate as I was not quick enough to move around. Now, here we go. We, we can push onto the 268, finish him off. 
carry on our push towards the Yo, who is, you know, he's going to bounce my turret. I'm just going to carry on pushing him because uh, I don't think he's got another shot loaded. He may have. I don't think he has. I think he's fired. I think he's on his reload. So I put one into him there. He gets whittled down. We do 2.8k. We bounce a thousand. We take one kill. And unfortunately, we weren't able to support Loro. But it's a relatively nice game. And this is what you can do in the WZ113. You can hold lines like that, you know. And if you've got the time and the patience, then you can do it. And you can have fun in this tank. And I certainly had fun in this tank. No doubt Loro didn't because he got wrecked without my support. And without the support of the rest of the team. And I'm sorry about that, Loro. So here we are rolling out on Black Goldville. A map that I particularly like. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move up into the caves the reason being i looked at their lineup and i've got a strong suspicion that that is where they're going to be heading so that's where i'm heading completely in that direction so we've already seen that there's a leo one he's he's, he's out there on a limb he's a little bit wide open not gonna lie our progetto has already been smacked and what I want to do here, I don't want to rush in, because when you rush in in tanks, you are going to get smacked. But I want to get to, I can see they're not coming into the cave. Now, Progetto is very, very aggressive. So what I want to do, I want to try and get into a decent is position to see what we can actually do. At the moment, the enemy is not attacking us. So we've got to reevaluate our position in here. Now, I think they're a bit isolated here. I can see the crown wagon, he's backing away. There's a Leo there somewhere. So I want to put some shots into... Oh, but there's an FV and he's far more dangerous than that little T100 as I come around the corner. I mean, the T100 we can we can cope with at a later date. But uh, the FV is, is a concern because obviously he can he can smack you for a lot. Um, oh, ammo racked on the T100. Goodbye, little T100. And there's the FV. Don't manage to pen him. That's where the WZ sometimes struggles. It does struggle with its penetration on occasion. They've lost two tanks. We've lost one tank. There's the Leo. Can we get anything into him? Yes, we can. Get uh, get a nice side shot into him. The thing about this tank is, I mean, Chinese guns aren't necessarily the best, as you see there. I mean, it's not the best tank to sort of fire on the move. Not really. But, but it is a relatively nice gun. And you can do relatively nice things with it. Uh, we're not setting the ward on fire. We've done 1,200 damage. We've taken a kill. We've, you know, we've used the mobility of the tank. We haven't lost any hit points ourselves. And if you stop and shoot, then you can get some good shots out of this little tanky. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to turn around and head back up to the cave area because that's where their heavies are. And I hope to God that we can weather the storm. <laughs> I'm not going to chase the Leo down. No point. He's... Uh, He's going to be caught out by somebody else. We've got the upper hand in this game. Admittedly, they've now got a mouse and an IS-7 and all that sort of stuff there. It, but it's three against five. I mean, this should be pretty straightforward. I can always pen the back of the mouse with this thing. However, you, you've got to be careful with the tank. As I said, the penetration isn't brilliant, um, nor is the gunner sometimes. But the turret armor is nice. We get a good bounce there. Now the IS-7 is going to rush me, which uh, if I can track him, yes I can. But I want to try and get past him if I can, but ain't easy. Um, so I'm going to put one into the side of the mouse. And just, you can see that its mobility on its turn isn't the best, and that's one of the problems with this tank. But it does have relatively decent armor that you can do stuff like that on. <coughs> Excuse me. Can we finish the mouse? No, nope, because the IS-7 got in the way. That was a good move by the IS-7. I don't need to finish the mouse. Somebody else can finish the mouse. I'm going to toy around with the IS-7 a bit more, see if I can track him again. No, I can't. Mouse is gone. IS-7 is the last man standing, and he's going to be taken out by somebody else. But we do 3,400 damage. We bounce uh, 920, which isn't too bad, and we destroy a tank. We get quite a lot of ribbons there because we're quite active and we get a lovely little second class which makes me happy to be fair and like i keep telling everybody in these videos it's not to showcase how fantastically brilliant i am because i'm not it's to showcase what the tank can do and how the tank performs and as i keep saying if you're looking for those golden m's or these massive damage games then you know 
go and watch uh, his royal fatness because that's what he does and all I'm showing you is how you know the the average player will play these tanks so that's been my look at the WZ113 the little Chinese heavy tank that sits at tier 10 a tank that I really do like in a tank that I think is is very much undervalued and underestimated it's got a unique play style it's not as you know up close in personal front lining it as some of the other heavies in the tier because of that weak lower plate but that dpm is to die for i mean it's absolutely beautiful and when you when you get the gun working the penetration is nice it's you're not going to struggle as much as you think you've just got to be very mindful of that bottom plate and that hull armor because virtually everything's going to pen you and virtually everything is going to hurt you and virtually everything is going to smack you from here to eternity and once you realize that and once you realize that as a tank you know it's 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 got a strong turret it's got a relatively decent ish gun not the best gun by far but it's not the worst either and it's got a great turn of speed unless you're trying to turn the turret or you're turning the hull i mean forwards and backwards in a straight line this tank is a absolute dream if you try however to uh, to turn it left and right then it, it gets a bit sluggish and a bit slow and a lot of people struggle with that not going to lie but you can do a lot in this tank as i said i love it i think it's a great tank and i think it should be played a lot more than what it is and you know i think a lot more people should have it but there we go that's just my view Anyway, as I said, that's the WZ113. I've been fooded. By all means, comment and everything below. I'd like to know your views, your thoughts on this little Chinese tier 10 heavy tank. Because that's what the comments are there for, guys. The comments are there for you to tell me what you actually think. So anyway, until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.